Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today, I'm gonna to be going over some of the best choices for this month's Mythic Invitational Qualifier play-in. Uh, the play-in this weekend is Historic Best of One, so we'll be looking at some of the best choices to take for this weekend. If you wanna qualify for the Mythic Invitational Qualifier, which if you then kill at, you get seven wins day one, seven wins day two, you're going to the Arena Championship, you're banking huge amounts of cash, and then eventually you'll qualify for Worlds, and then you'll become a world's champion. So we're starting on day one, how to get through the Mythic Invitational Qualifier play-in. So we're going to look at stats from Untapped GG, which you see on the screen. It's a companion tool that runs alongside Arena Client, tracks win rates, loss rates, uh, deck collections, aggregates it all, a whole bunch of useful stuff that you can use for free. Link is in the video description down below. I'll paste all these deck lists as well into the uh, video description. So if you want to copy and paste them and get some going, uh, we can do that. So we're going to look at predominantly Platinum to Mythic ranked decks with the exception of the Wizards deck, which I don't think this version that's being shown right now is the most efficient. Um, we'll look at a Diamond version that's got a higher win rate. Um, and jumping in, one of the top, there's kind of like pillars of the archetypes. There's the Artifact decks, the Wizards decks, the Control decks, and then kind of like the Creature um, Spam decks. Uh, so Boros Artifacts, Boros Affinity, uh, it's kind of paired around the engine of Retrofitter Foundry, which is a card that you'll see a lot of in these artifact decks. So it seems kind of like slow and clunky, but really you're playing this predominantly at first for its last ability, Sacrifice Orthopter, create a 4-4 colorless, which on turn one, you can play this and an Ornithopter and get a 4-4. Uh, that's a good rate to kind of keep an attacking. You have Esper Sentinel to tax your opponent, draw cards. Portable Holes Removal, the Foundry can also create tokens and stuff like that. Shadow Sphere for Trample and Lifelink, uh, which pairs nicely with Mishiko. You have Toolcraft Exemplar as a way to um, get a boost. So it's just it's a one mana 3-2 first strike when it attacks, which is a good rate. You have Barbed Spike as catch all, or like another way to make a Thopter and then equipment later that you can increase the power of Esper Sentinel to tax more. Glass Casket is more removal, Ingenious Smith to find you artifacts. And then Yotai is another way to make Thopters. Uh, you can tap artifacts to deal with creatures. And then it, it animates one of your artifacts into a 4 4. So the Barbed Spike equipment could become a 4 4, uh, Dark Steel Citadel, anything like that as well. Um, I think the deck that might be best positioned this weekend is actually Azorius Control. Uh, there's going to be a lot of folks that are going to be looking to play. Um, wizards or artifact decks and I think Divine Purge is probably one of the best cards you could bring this weekend. It's an obnoxious card and I wish it never existed uh, but it is really effective at what it does exiling all creature cards with three mana or and artifacts three CMC or less so it deals with all that. It also gets rid of the lands in the affinity deck causes them to come into play tapped so it really just slows down the tempo. Uh, against wizards they can't haste out their things because they'll come into play tapped so it's really efficient that way. This version is the um, Stifle, Strict Proctor, Lotus Field combo. So basically if you have a Strict Proctor or you can hold up Stifle and counter the ability, uh, you get Lotus Field without having to sacrifice lines. Um, bunch of counter spells, bunch of removal spells. Your main win conditions are the Wandering Emperor, Teferi Ultimate, or some Shark Typhoons, or the Creature or Castle lines. Um, going next to Is It Wizards, so again, there's a couple different variations. This was the one that I popularized in part uh, with the Strangles main and then no expressive iteration instead playing Mentor's Guidance, which always draws you the two cards. Expressive, you can't really play it on turn two. It has to be a turn three play. Um, I like this on turn two because if you just go Soul Scar or Symmetry Sage alone, it lets you uh, draw some extra cards as well. Um, so the thought of Strangle here is if your opponent's on Symmetry Sage decks as well, they put, go on the play um you want to be able to answer the sage on your turn with one mana you can't do that with play with fire you can't do that with wizards lightning so you're always kind of behind uh beyond that uh we just we went up to 21 lands in this version Ottawaro is another just utility land could help against nine lives creature decks stuff like that but the core of the deck is to play out wizards play spells to get added bonuses to the power with like symmetry sage balmar prowess uh, you can boost up the power of dreadhorde arcanist that lets you then cast uh, more expensive spells. You can also haste out things with Reckless Charge. We then go to Azorius Affinity, and you can see this is a deck where I'm missing wild cards. It's one of the things Untapped does nicely. 
Um, so this is more of a mid-rangey version where the Boros is more of an aggressive slanted deck. So you have a lot of the same elements. You have your Retrofitter Foundry, your Portable Holes, Esper Sentinels, Ingenious Smith. But this particular version has some counter spells and Metallic Rebuke, a way to refill your hand and Thought Monitor, as well as Karn for card advantage and then big creatures. And then Nettle Cyst as a way to just have really large bodies based on the artifacts and enchantments you control. So a uh, little bit more mid-range. Uh, the Boros, this one can grind and deal with like an initial wave of attack. The Boros one's a little bit more all-in aggressive style deck. Uh, we then go to Rakdos mid-range. Um, so this is kind of a build upon of like the Pioneer and Explorer version. So you'll see similarities with like Shieldred, Graveyard Trespasser, Fable, Bone Crusher, Liliana. Um, Kroxa, just a lot of like value two for ones. You're supplementing Thoughtseize with also Inquisition of Kozilek. Given the meta is fairly aggressive, I would probably do a 3 3 split just to save some of your life. The only way you can gain life in this deck is two Shieldred, which is still a passive way, and then Graveyard Trespasser, which is fairly limited. Um, and then you have like Season Pyromancer, which works really nicely with Shieldred, just a boost up way to kind of refill your hand going into that respect. Um, and then lastly, we have Mono Green Elves. Um, so this is a all-in creature deck. Uh, can have very explosive draws, but very susceptible to sweepers. Uh, this particular version is not playing the new Lord that lets you draw cards. It's probably something you'd want to look to include. Um, but this one's looking to generate as much mana as possible, as big of a board as possible. Uh, and then use stuff like Elvish Arch Druid, Circle of Dream Druid, or the flipped Itlamok. So basically Guy's Cradle at home. Generate a whole bunch of mana, tutor up a crater hoof behemoth, and then just haste and like overrun your opponent. You could sink mana into Elvish Warmaster and Allosaurus Shepherd as well, uh, just to kind of go over the top. Um, I unfortunately will not be able to play in this qualifier. I would probably play, like I said, blue white control. The Wizards deck is one that I've been fond of, but the last like week or so, uh, I haven't been doing as well with it. Um, if we look at like some of my streak here, it's been kind of ups and downs collectively with it. Um, so like most recently, I was at like 50% win rate, where if we look historically, I was a lot higher, um, just kind of coming through, like 17 and four run, six and one, two and one. Um, more recently, it's been, it's easier to attack right now. And if people want to go for it, they can. I suspect um, the Boros Artifact deck is playing around of trying to make it a more mid rangey deck with some Karns in there and a Nettle Cyst. Um, again, just you have explosive draws, but it's hard to play from behind in some of these decks and invest the one you want to either be super, super linear or have some play. I was trying to burn, it was fine. I was actually running this for a bit. It was having a little bit of success. So it's a take on the Rakdos mid range, but more aggressively slanted. Fatal Pushes, Strangles, Main, Underdog, Static Discharge, Croxos, Lelia to refill your hand. Coligan's Command is another card you might want to consider if you're looking at the Rakdos deck. Um, it is a, de a card that is really well suited right now, being able to two for one a lot of times. Um, but yeah, I'd probably play Blue White Control personally. Uh, not a deck that I super love, but just seeing it. I haven't been playing too much Historic lately. Standard was what we played for last MIQ. And I've just been playing like Explore. Um, and then usually, like Mono Red historically has been a thing, but it, it's really bad into Wizards. And I suspect Wizards to be a very popular deck. So it's tough against the Artifact deck with Lifelink. It's tough against Wizards. So I wouldn't go in actively looking for that. Um, yeah, so in any case, that is it for the week. L let me know what you think. I'm, I'm not going to be doing any metadata or, yeah, metadata videos. Um, or any kind of new content until Brothers War. I'll be part of the pre-release on the 10th. Um, I'm just taking a couple days off. Uh, it's kind of a downtime in content, and I've been really busy with personal stuff. So just taking this break, refreshing the mind, and we'll be back. I appreciate the continued support as always. And if you're new to this channel, catching it for the first time, we do these meta breakdowns every week uh, for every format on Arena, so you can see what's trending, stuff like that. Uh, as well as do gameplay content. So you make sure to subscribe, it helps out the channel, it's free, and uh, make sure to drop a like and comment. Thanks for watching, hope you have a great one, and good luck to those playing.